and welcome back to 59 Minutes. My name is Levi Kones. We are talking with uh, Dr. Uh, James Scherer on the issue of deciphering data on election choices. He's a senior data analyst at Traweza East Africa. We've been talking about some of the data and some of the findings they've been having and even off uh, camera we have continued that conversation. People are interested, Dr. in matters to do with campaigns a lot. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I have noticed that you really put a spotlight on was some of the, uh, I don't know how to put it, I think, let me look here, it's some of the, the, the questions around electoral choices in as far as uh, maybe opinions are concerned because you talk about how citizens, uh, whether they value development records over gender or ethnicity. You talk about whether they, in fact, these are findings you've, you've done about whether they have a preference for a candidate's record over their identity. You talk about uh, whether the citizen can vote for a candidate accused of corruption, yeah, even if they have a good record in, in some other way, mm. you know. Uh, you talk about whether more citizens have, uh, you know, think their elected representative can be trusted and uh, whether citizens have a top priorities for improving citizens' lives. And these are actual, uh, whether there's different demographic groups that share the same priorities for improving citizens' lives. I mean, these are serious issues. I think there's this saying in Swahili, wanasema, kula kwako na kura kwako. Yes. <laughs> they eat from this person, but they vote this other one. Yeah. So, uh, and I'm happy because I can see some change coming, uh, especially among the youths. Because from what the youth said, yeah. kwamba, these people will not deliver, whether it's this or this, or they, 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 they are manifested. Yeah. Tell me what surprised you the most in your data No, it's collection. about the youth, because we thought that they have the energy, as in, uh, they're excited. You know, I remember when I, uh, I reached 18 years, yeah. I was so much excited because I have power, uh, whatever, uh, rights to do A, B, C, D. And during the first election, I remember... Oh, me too. I, I think about so it all the time nowadays. I, yeah, I, was, I was quite a participant too. But now, look at it, how things are happening. Because I know with the old generation, they're the same people who are saying, kula, kula kwako na kura kwake. Yeah. We have, I, I think we are so much, I don't know whether I'm using the right term, entrenched into a uh, mm, tribal, tribal... Mm, cocoons. Yes. Yeah. And besides that, this person comes from this, we know this and all that. Uh, because... Uh, in a certain region, we had someone who was uh, uh, an MD and made a certain company have a good record in terms of record keepings and all that. And to me, he was quite appealing in terms of managing the, um, public the town, finances. Yeah, public finances, because he has good track records. Mm. And he decided to resign and get to politics, and he wanted to be a, a governor certain county, mm -hmm. let me not mention the name. And then we had this other person who had been there for ages, and it's clearly known he's not transparent. Mm. And then when it came to election day, and I think if you are quite sober and thinking upright, you could go for this, because he has managed this uh, organization yeah. in a very good way. But it was quite disappointing to find this person losing, and this other person again. In terms of campaign, because the other gentleman really spent a lot, yeah. a lot, Unga handouts and all that. It should be straightforward. So That's I wonder, it's like these handouts, like uh, good incentives, and probably for us to vote for you, you have to give out handouts and all that. You tell me, according to your, to your findings, mm -hmm. do we care? Ah, if there's you, a generation. If, if you have money, do we care? To me, I think there is a generation yeah, about you know your morals, your yeah, and your uh, you know ability to articulate uh, yes, and issues. I and I your, think if we can measure on the youths, I think they can be able to see the sense in, in such things. Because yes, right now, right now they are not willing to vote, and some yeah, but are it's the they're, they're the ones they're the ones with the fifty six percent likelihood of voting. <laughs> but now the other question is, and uh, every rally is addressing young people. Yes, ironically. But no. No, 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 look at it this way. Look at the registration and the majority who are there, who attend these rallies, are the youths. And they're the same, same people who are not willing to register. <laughs> is that a contrast? Yes, it is a contrast, mm -hmm. but I think there's an explanation. Mm -hmm. uh, you're the data guy. Because what they are but, after. But, <laughs> yeah, uh, it's, about after the, the, the it's about the why. They, yes. Exactly. Yeah. But they know this individual does not have an agenda. Yeah. So watch it to Kule, we are not going to vote. Now you can imagine, like, 
let's assume like we, we you, you, you are addressing like um, a rally whereby like 95% are youths. So you get the impression that you'll be elected, not knowing only 61% are the ones who are willing to vote. And then you have another rally which is not all that big, consisting of older people. Yes, you might underrate them, but they, they say these are the people who are willing to vote. Maybe the youths are being used as, uh, yes. as uh, how do I put it? I think they are hired, as, if I can put yeah, it that way. As top dressing for mm. the meal. You mm. see it as, you know, optics. Mm. So that mm. if I have a rally and there are young people coming, mm -hmm. and they, you know, they're coming for lunch, you know, and uh, uh, how do you put it, handouts and, but, and whatnot. The fact that they are there mm -hmm. and, and they are meaning mm. and they are shouting my name, mm is a precursor to you who is at home mm -hmm. seeing that I'm quite popular. Sure. So that you can get on and the wave. And what is captured by the TVs. Yes. So you can get on the wave easily. And say, yeah, hey, Nani, uh, Levy has a lot of numbers. Mm. Uh, he's unstoppable. So you, you, you tend to think, so, you know what, let me just cast, cast my lot with him. What's the point of wasting my vote by voting against what is already an unstoppable thing? But you know these people are the same people who have built some profile, as in they have numbers, people following them, and which has taken ages. And that's why we have this other problem, this, the same same politicians who are being recycled by their parties. So can we have a, a system within our parties to, uh, like what happened to Obama? But I think the party found this person has potential to lead the country. Can't we have such approach? Because we have very few, many people who have the capacity to lead and make uh, citizens' lives improve. That would, that would take us, uh, because one of the things you, you talked about here, mm. it would take us having a radical mindset. Because you talk about uh, some of the citizens' top priorities mm -hmm. in an election campaign. Mm -hmm. In your data, what did you find out those to be? Come again, sorry. What are their top priorities in an election campaign? One is to fulfill their promises. For the citizenry? Yes. Uh -huh. That's what they are looking for. Someone who is honest enough. And Akisema, I'll drill like five boreholes in your village. He, he, he should be able to accomplish. Yeah, but you see, we can't know that in our campaign. That's quite difficult. And that's why I think yes. they are going with this uh, saying with a go that goes, better the devil you know than the angel you don't know. <laughs> yes, <laughs> this is a bad person. But the yeah, little he has done are, are, are more safe being with him than this person that I don't know. Mm. Not knowing, probably this was a, a, a better alternative than what we already know. Mm. Yes. Yeah, because campaigns, so I think largely we, we are, we are, we are, pitch, we are pitching hope on, yes. on, on the unseen. Mm -hmm. Another thing that is also coming out is that we also don't read the manifest of this individual. This person is saying A, B, C, D, the party stands for oh, this that's and so this. True. That's so true. Mm -hmm. But also the parties, don't go out of their way to give us those manifestos. Exactly. I mean, we had a launch by uh, Azimio La Umoja, and Raila read a 10-point agenda. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen it on my table, have you? <laughs> but let I me ask you. I have heard about UDA's bottom-up, uh, mm -hmm. you know, economic model. Mm -hmm. I have not seen it on my table. In a clear format, have you? No. I don't think the interest, even of the parties, is for us to delve into the integrity mm -hmm. of what they are saying. Mm -hmm. The interest is to get as catchy a slogan as possible, mm -hmm throw it there, uh, patch it up with a few things, sure. and hopefully that sells, we talk about it later. Because that's what happened with Jubilee. If you mm. ask any Jubilee supporter right now, just mm. walking on the streets, so when you are voting for Jubilee, what was touching you about the manifesto? They'll be hard-pressed to tell you. Sure. So you they know, They'll say Uru has failed. You ask him, based on what? <laughs> on the ma manifesto that he gave you, which one? Give me the pointers. The way I end up, no, corner up, Amanda, mm. camp. They'll be hard-pressed. Mm. And any other party, you know, for I'm just using him as an example. Sure. So the parties are not interested in giving us a real look at their manifesto. Mm. The people may also be, they, you know, they say, mm. I, I, I get the feeling that even from your demographics, even when people are telling you, yes, we are interested. Mm. Are we hearing what, when you're doing sampling, when people are speaking, are they speaking what's truly from the heart? Or are they speaking what they think people should say when they're being asked questions concerning an election? Because it makes us wonder. Uh, in terms of the, the, the truth of the matter is when people are talking about development and then the choice they go and make, you know, yet they say we are concerned about a, uh, a politician who will actually do what we want, what he says he will do. Then when they go to the ballot, they make a choice for a politician they may, that has not been doing. 
what he has been saying, you know, he'll be, he'll be doing. I don't know whether you, you, you get me. Mm. It makes me wonder whether we are... What do you feel about it now as a data analyst? Um, one thing is, we normally collect opinions, although there some be some kind of subjectivity in terms of the res someone's response to yeah. it. So we normally try our level best to ensure that we maintain some level of objectivity. And you know opinions keep on changing. And as you've put it, Wakati Naona, someone has a big crowd following him or her. There is that in Kenya uh, scenario, as in keep people keeps on changing there. No, let me go with the winning team. And I think that's what has been there before. Now, f not forgetting that whoever you think that has the masses, probably uh, the manifesto says nothing in terms of how they are going to improve their citizens' life and all that. But given that my mind is into this person, I, I will not even listen to the opponent. What is he saying? Does he or she has an agenda? So I, I can't understand, and I think politicians have mastered the game to know how to entice Wanainchi. See Wajinga? And probably that's why they are on social media, to spread this rumors, negativity, and all that. Because they know, like, in the Kenyan society, the catch of reading is not there. So for me, it'll be much, I'll spend like five hours reading stuff on so social media, rather than picking a book and read and get to. Because in a book, you can be able to get in-depth information and all that. True. But you know, with this social media, we have this person who is crafting the message. You know what is catchy, and we, what will attract m more people. And that's why it's going to craft some of the negative message and all that to portray this the uh, opponent to be this kind of a person. And when I share this with my friend, even though one thing is he trusts me. So when he, I share with him this message, and when he gets to hear me say this, chances are high if he trusts me based on previous engagement. Okay, I tend to think this person must be right. Yeah? I trust his or her opinion. And I think that's what is now ailing Kenya. Yeah, and fact, I, it's high time for us to change such a mentality, for us to be able to decide oh, or to elect for sober people who are sober and who, are, who have interest for an NG. You know, you just talked about reading culture, and I've got the newspapers here, and I can tell you, even the people who read newspapers, mm -hmm. we are a dying breed. Sure. And, for, uh, and imagine the newspaper can actually have interesting news that you can read, you can sit and read and look at this and that, and, and get a lot of information all in one paper. Now, a manifesto may not be as entertaining. But if you can't get through a paper. Let me cut you short. Okay. <laughs> this goes back to the, <laughs> to the Ministry of Education. How, How is can our you curriculum? get through a manifesto? Huh? How is our curriculum? Uh, whatever was there before, like 844. Allow me to go to that. Yeah. We were taught to cram. Just read what is coming to our exam. Even when teachers were preparing for exam, they didn't just go to all the topics. They were specific. They mm. did it strategically this and this and this. Now, it is started all the way. And I think for us to be able to change our mindset, we have to address our education system. Because it's the same, same system that encourages us to prefer using shortcuts. Mm. Yes. Then it makes it difficult for exactly. us to even hold somebody to account mm -hmm. based on what we read mm. that they were going to do. Exactly. And another thing, you know. we encourage corruption. As in, we find we have this politician before he was, on, he was not rich, after five years, he's the one showing off around the village. I have this, I've bought these plots, I have the latest model and all that. So what does that one tell us? And that's why as it, there's this question that you asked me, why do we have so many as aspirants this year? Yeah. What is attracting them to? What's it's not service them? delivery. But uh, to me, I think they have a lot. Do you know where I stay right now? Mm -hmm. In this Nairobi, mm -hmm. we have 32 aspirants for MCA. <laughs> 32. That I know of. I don't know whether some will come up later. Mm -hmm. But the ones that have registered, mm -hmm. that are moving around, mm -hmm. I've seen their posters. I made it my business to count and find out we have 32 aspirants. What is the force driving them to that? I'm probably, I, said, I, I might was, be having an answer. I was joking uh, to my wife. I was sending her daughter. <laughs> It's only 31 Vilio. Let me on give you August, an example. On August 9th, 31 people will be fired. Exactly. <laughs> Let me give you an example. Yeah. There, there's this politician, an MP, yeah. not mention the constituency. I, I'm told he spent like between 100 
uh, 200 million. So when you do simple maths, let's assume that they get uh, a glossary of one, or like a million per mm. month. So in five years, that's 60. 60, 60 months. Yes. So multiplied by one million, that's 60 million. Mm. So 60 million, that's what they're supposed to get yeah. for the five years. You but the take same, same person, any extra allowances is only 20. Exactly. Now, will take. Yeah. <laughs> this person goes ahead. It's, mm. you see, it's an investment because yeah. there's no way you can invest into a business yeah. whereby you expect to get a loss. So how come? What made this person decide to spend over 100 million and he's sure that you get 60 million? C can't you do some <laughs> simple maths and get to see the other benefits? Yeah, the people who really and there is probably that might be the force behind having so many aspirants vying for these seats. Because if that's an MP, you cannot imagine what's happening to MCAs yeah, in I terms only, of requirements I can only and all imagine. that. Hmm? Oh, I forgot to wear a watch today. My time is up oh. uh, almost. But I want to ask you something about mm -hmm. the, the, the the findings mm -hmm. that you have made. Now, when you make these finding, uh, findings as mm -hmm. to as a, uh, East Africa, then then you release them. What is the uh, mm, what is your end game? So what you normally do, uh, we have a website where we, put, we normally put our briefs and the data because we like being transparent. And allow me to say this, and for most statisticians or many polling agencies, they shy from sharing the, the methodology because that's where you doctor. As you know, garbage in, garbage out. So if you're not careful with the methodology, and that's why they are, in most cases they're not shared publicly. But we have a policy that we have to share it to the public mm -hmm. for them to get to see not only the, 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 the briefs and the methodology, even the data. If you want to do further analysis, because what you normally give is superficial findings, as in, not sorry, sorry, the overview, mm -hmm. like um, on SIPO indicators and all that. But we have academicians who would want to get into the details, like we control for this age, this and this. What is making these youth not be willing to vote? What other factors? Which factors are seen? These are regressionary models and all that. So we give this data for free. You go download and do whatever you want to do. So by putting it there, we can have an individual want to do like a panel analysis from this period to this period, how we abuse and all that. So we do, don't just look at what's happening today. We'd be happy because you have policymakers who would want to use historical information to be able to come up with better policies. So we normally provide that. We normally have engagement uh, during the launch and even after the launch. And <clears throat> besides that, we also engage with uh, journalists, especially those who do stories mm. over time uh, and they require data. We also provide assistance in terms of analysis and all that, such that the discussion can continue. Because uh, bridging the gap is not something simple and it's not a one day event. It's a long day, so we ha must have material that can be able to be able to make the the discussion move on, even even past the launch. Mm. Yes. Okay. Mm. So as a as a parting shot to our viewer today, first you said where do you get the data? Where they can they get it so they can read it in its entirety? They can visit our website. Yes. Toweza. Dot org. Dot org. Toweza. Yes. Dot org. Yeah, and in case and you fail to to get the data, there is an email there. Just write to us and be willing to share all the materials. All the materials. Yes. It's very helpful to know, uh, you know what's going on there. How would you advise Kenyans? We are in election year. You are, you are a, uh, an analyst. In your opinion, from where you sit, what would you say? There was a time when Mzee Moi said, Sia Sambaya, my Shambaya. I think it's upon us to decide on how Kenya will be five years from now. And we have the right uh, material, right information that is available for us to be able to assess and analyze the people who are coming to seek for our votes. So want us to make a um, conscious decision in terms of how do we evaluate these people? Are we looking at the person who give me more money or I'm looking uh, for the, someone who will be able to deliver? Because if we decide to choose someone who is not going to deliver, we are the same, same people who cry. Uh, for the next five years. So it's upon us to make conscious decision. Not just look at the election as any other thing that has been there before, but we need to know that it will shape our lives in terms of the cost of education, the kind of curriculum our children will be subjected to, and even the tax that we'll be paying. So it's a high time for us to take this uh, event or issue seriously than the way we have done before. Thank you. Yeah.
It is, it is. Mm. Thank you so much for coming, Dr. James. Asante. I really appreciate you giving us that insight. We look forward to having a discussion again. Sure. Hopefully before the elections. Sana. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because we have several service mm -hmm. looking at other things and also related to election. Because it's not just registration which is now gone. We have how is ABC preparing uh, yes. their systems to make one inch confident in whatever they'll be doing. Yes. So we have a lot of things that we have ahead of us. Thank you so much. Asante. Uh, that's 59 minutes for today. Thank you for watching. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. See you tomorrow. Good day.